All right, I want to show you something. Two very interesting videos I've shown in other uh, videos exposing Steven Anderson before, but just yeah, I want to show them again just to prove my point that Anderson, he can look good when he's on camera, but when he's when he doesn't know he's being filmed, you see the raging maniac that he is. I mean, Sam Gitt pointed this out too, that, that Anderson basically needs an adult, another adult to basically make him look good when he's on camera in his professional videos. But in his sermons or when he thinks he's not being filmed, you see the, the raging you know child that he is. These two clips I'm going to show you are very shocking. And by the way, too, are not in compliance with how a bishop or an elder is supposed to act. But just remember, in both these clips I'm going to show, Anderson does not know he's being filmed. Okay, Someone's secretly filming him. So in these clips, you see what Anderson is like off camera when he's, when he's, not, when he's not being filmed. You see the raging maniac that he is. Okay, watch watch this first clip where he's like scream, where he's basically screaming at his deacon for I guess doing a bad job and believing in oneness. Okay, get a load of this. This is nuts. Watch this. Josh Hall last night at some barbecue or something. I was not. You're going around telling everybody about Babylon. You're telling everybody oh about your God. oneness Pentecostal crap. You suck as an employee. You have sucked the whole time you worked here. You go around singing your own praises. I have been this close to firing you every month. The only reason I kept you around is because I don't want to rock the boat. You're leaving anyway. You know, if I had to work with you for the rest of my life, I would have fired you a long time ago. You are lazy. You suck. You've never done anything that I told you to do beyond the minimum. Any extra, hey, try to work on this, try to get this up. You do the minimum of everything. You phone it in. At the best of times, you're a C minus. He can say that. Garrett will say the same thing because we've observed your habits of doing nothing and being able to move there just because they just want to move there. And I thought it was great. And I was encouraging people. But now I find out it's because you're talking crap about our oh, church God. and telling them how your church is going to be better. Pastor, I promise I'm not doing that. I promise to you. You're a liar. I, will you play, I promise you, Pastor. I promise from the bottom of promise? my heart. What do you promise? That I'm not trying to split the church. You believe in the oneness? I don't. I believe that yeah, Jesus baptism is the Father. Baptism in Jesus only. Jesus is the Father. That's heresy I did not and think that it was that big of a deal. I honestly oh, yeah, did not. Yeah, the Trinity is kind of a big deal. Somebody is a liar. And I think it's you, because your life doesn't. Be your testimony sucks right now. So I'm, I'm. I think you're the liar. But we'll find out on Wednesday night when we take you before the whole church, and we find out what's really been going on. We'll find out who you've been talking your oneness crap to. Be an idiot and play semantics with me. I'm not going to play your stupid game. You understand? I'm not. Playing. Oneness. It means that Jesus is the Father. That's a stupid doctrine. It denies the Trinity. It's false. You understand? I don't believe in it. You and just you say, hey, I don't want to talk about that, like you promised me that you would. You told me, you little liar, that when people came to you and asked you about it, you said, hey, I don't want to talk I about that. I did that, that multiple times. That is the truth. I did yeah, that multiple Yeah, but now I guess times. you're all high and mighty now because you think you're leaving. You can do whatever the hell you want because you're leaving in a month and a half. You think you can just suck as an employee. You don't do anything I tell you to do. You do nothing. What the hell did you do for 50 hours last week? I did a bad thing, lazy I, jerk. I agree that I have done a lot worse since yeah, you since brother Chris you has been sucked. hired. No, you sucked from the beginning. You always sucked. Why okay? you give me that? I told my wife that you're a C- minus when you started. I told Roger Jimenez. Those are the only two people, because I don't go around talking crap like you. I told my one best friend and my wife that you're a bad employee. And I told them that a year ago. Well, then don't screw up your life. You don't want to face the consequence for it. You want to try to split the church? You know how it's going to split? It's going to split the same way it always splits. You and your couple of cronies can get the hell out of here, and 99% of people are going to stay, and this church is still going to run 300. And I don't care if you take half the church with you. Go ahead. Good riddance. If people are that stupid to believe in this oneness stupidity, then good riddance. This is a Baptist church. This is not a charismatic church. That's what you've been doing. Doing nothing and then teaching that. You're not helping the church at all. You don't help it grow. You're taking it, you're, you're trying to destroy it. Huh? No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. You I love this you're not church. talking people into going there because your church is better than I promise. I, oh, that, oh, I have never far. one time asked anyone to go to my church. One time. I promise. Well, somebody's lying. I promise on everything. I never one time asked anyone to go. To yeah. <laughs> If you thought that was nuts, oh man, you haven't seen anything yet. Get get over this next clip I'm gonna play, where once again Anderson does not know he's being filmed. Someone's pulled out his phone and is secretly recording him, uh, and watch as he's he's heckling one of his church members for supposedly I guess things saying things about him behind his back, and then watch as somebody else tries to tries to just lightly correct him, and Anderson screams at that guy too. 
it's just a brand new visitor who just is you know trying to correct him on on this this kind of diatrophies type treatment and he screams at that guy too remember this is the raging maniac anderson is when he when he doesn't when he thinks he's not on camera okay watch this this is nuts you're not going to believe this right here has texted people without coming to me look if he had a problem with my doctrine shouldn't he have come to me yeah, yeah. or should he be going behind my back and backbiting going to other church members who never asked his opinion mind you never even asked and said hey uh chris what do you think about pastor anderson's sermon he just texts them because he saw them on youtube defending me so because they were on youtube defending me he takes it upon himself to rebuke them for the defending the pastor of his church calls my statements wicked and evil and listen this you know i know your your faggoty buddy ashton yakton lets everybody get up and say whatever they want but in this church, it's not a free-for-all. It's not an open mic. You don't come to this church and pretend to be a faithful member of the church while you're going behind the pastor's back. Did you ever have the guts to confront me with that, Chris? Huh? Did you ever have the guts to confront me with that, Chris? No, you didn't. You didn't have the guts, you coward. You're like Judas. You want to go behind my back. I want you to get up and get out of this church right now. Get out. Get out of here. Get out. What's that? Oh, Here's my Bible Browns. You're a Judas Iscariot. Railer. Railer. Yeah. Railer. Yeah. The simulator. Yeah, backbiter. I don't care if you're saved or not. You don't come to this yeah. church and backbite the pastor without even having the guts to confront him yourself and go around and say all this stuff, huh? Why do you want to be here, Chris, if I'm tampering with the gospel? There are 40 other independent Baptist churches in this town that are King James only, that don't, quote, tamper with the gospel. So why don't you go join one of them, Chris? Why are you even here? I think it's a great church. Oh, really? But the pastor makes wicked and evil statements and tampers with the gospel. That's not a great church, Chris. I agree with, like, 95% of what you say, but if I disagree with 5%, I don't think that's reason for me to... You're right. Disagreeing with, disagreeing with what I preach is not a reason to be kicked out. You're right. Because, listen to me, no one in this church agrees with me on everything. And that's Okay. Because we're all different, we all read the Bible, we all have the Holy Spirit. No two Christians are going to agree on everything. That's fine. No pro I've had people come up to me and say, hey, I don't agree with this doctrine. I always tell them, that's okay. You don't have to agree with me. You're welcome to come here. But there's a big difference between not agreeing and calling the pastors preaching wicked and evil and accusing them of tampering with the gospel behind his back without ever bringing that to me. Do you see the difference, Chris? I see the difference get out of here, idiot. Pick him up and take him out if you won't leave. You need to pray for him. This is not take him out. Hey, get out of here. I didn't ask you. You've never even been here, fool. Get out. Here. Get out. Get out. You don't just walk in here and start telling us how to run the church. We got a bunch of filthy faggots out there protesting us right now. We're in a battle right now. Get out of here. You need to ask your advice. Pick him up and get him out of here if you won't leave. Yeah, that's fine. Take your time. Now look, if I, I will listen to people who actually are members of our church, who actually attend here, not a first-time visitor. Yeah. Does somebody, if somebody thinks that there's a reason why they should be allowed to stay, let me know. You know, this reminds me of something. I remember back when I was a lost, you know, atheist. I was I was a lost atheist in my early teens, and I was wanting to become a gaming YouTuber. And there was a popular YouTuber named PewDiePie, and he actually did a video about you know forced happiness on on YouTube. Many big YouTubers. And again, I'm not trying to you know I hate to use a worldly example, but my point is is that PewDiePie you know pointed out how this force how YouTubers have to force happiness. What? Because when you when you follow somebody on the internet, you don't you don't know what to like off camera. Basically, and like PewDiePie in his video pointed out, they had to have a forced happiness, and really they're just forcing it because why? You don't know what to like off camera. You don't know them personally. They can put, they can put on a good charade when they're on camera, but off camera they can be a completely different person. You know, it's that simple. Anderson can look good on camera. He can look all professional, but when he when he thinks he's not on camera, when he thinks he's off camera, you see the the angry child that he is. He, he's a, he's a child in an in in adult's body. That's when he get down to it, and. I uh, just want to quickly read a verse of scripture to end this off because you saw those two clips, the raging nutcase that he is. And is this is this a qualifications for a bishop? Does he meet those qualifications? Well, let's look into it. Titus chapter 1, verses 5 down to verse uh, 8. 
For this cause I left thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, to enter and ordain elders in every city, as I had appointed thee. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, I wonder if uh, sending really perverted sexual messages back back uh, about two years ago, Anderson's oldest sons were doing. I wonder if that uh, is a violation of not being accused of right or unruly about the children. For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, nor striker, not given to filthy lucre, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Um, I don't think we saw that in those two clips. You know, Here's what we did see, uh, a violation of this right here, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. The elders which are among you I, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a, of a ready mind, not good at reading on a computer, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. Um, what we saw right there was being a, was lording over the heritage, you know. God, of course, lording over God's heritage. Of course, they're not saved, but just hear my point. Obviously, uh, that's what we saw right there. That's Anderson unhinged, and the real that's, that's the real Stephen Anderson. That's that's what he's like when he's not when he's not when he's not a camera filming him. When he doesn't have a script. When he doesn't have another adult to try to make him act like what I think is is I think he is he's in his forties. What I think would be a forty year old man, but. It seems like he's a 12-year-old and a, I even say an 8-year-old probably in a 40-year-old's body. What we saw right there. So just wanted to show you guys that. That's what you're, if you're a follower of Anderson, that's what your your favorite guy is like. Your favorite pastor is like uh, unhinged and, and when he thinks he's off camera. So I want to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Don't be deceived by Stephen Anderson's call. I'm, a, I'm an ex-new IFB member, uh, as, as are some of the others who expose Anderson. Uh Mark and avoid them. I mean, I mean, don't be deceived by them. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.